11-2. Probability and Punnett Squares. Whenever Mendel performed a cross with pea plants, he carefully categorized and counted the many offspring. Every time Mendel repeated a particular cross, he obtained similar results. For example, whenever Mendel crossed two plants that were hybrids for stem height, about three-fourths of the resulting plants were tall and about one-fourth were short. Mendel realized that the principle of probability could be used to explain the results of the genetic crosses. Genetics and Probability The likelihood that a particular event will occur is called probability. As an example of probability, consider an ordinary event like the coin flipping shown in figure 11-6. There are two possible outcomes. The coin may land heads up or tails up. The chances or probabilities of either outcome are equal. Therefore, the probability that a single coin flip will come up heads is one chance in two. This is one half or 50%. If you flip a coin three times in a row, what is the probability that it will land heads up every time? Because each coin flip is an independent event, the probability of each coin's landing heads up is half. Therefore, the probability of the flipping three heads in a row is one half times one half times one half, which equals one eighth. As you can see, you have a one chance in eight of flipping heads three times in a row. That the individual probabilities are multiplied together illustrates an important point. Past outcomes do not affect future ones. How is coin flipping relevant to genetics? The way in which alleles segregate is completely random, like a coin flip. The principle of probability can be used to predict the outcomes of genetic crosses. Punnett squares. The gene combinations that might result from a genetic cross can be determined by drawing a diagram known as a Punnett square. The Punnett square in figure 11-7 shows one of Mendel's segregation experiments. The types of gametes produced by each F1 parent are shown along the top and left sides of the square. The possible gene combinations for the F2 offspring appear in the four boxes that make up the square. The letters in the Punnett square represent alleles. In this example, capital T represents the dominant allele for tallness, and lowercase t represents the recessive allele for shortness. Punnett squares can be used to predict and compare the genetic variations that will result from a cross. Organisms that have two identical alleles for a particular trait, capital T, capital T, or, capital, or little, lowercase t, lowercase t, in this example, are said to be homozygous. Organisms that have two different alleles for the same trait are heterozygous. Homozygous organisms are true breeding for a particular trait. Heterozygous organisms are hybrids for a particular trait. All of the tall plants have the same phenotype or physical characteristics. They do not, however, have the same genotype or genetic makeup. The genotype of one-third of the plants is capital T, capital T, while the genotype of the two-thirds of the plant, tall plants is capital T, lowercase t. The plants in figure 11-8 have the same phenotype but different genotypes. Probability and Segregation 
Look again at figure 11-7. One fourth of the F2 plants have two alleles for tallness, capital T, capital T, which is two fourths or one half of the F2 plants have one allele for tallness and one allele for shortness, big T, little t. Because the allele for tallness is dominant over the allele for shortness, three-fourths of the F2 plants should be tall. Overall, there are three tall plants for every one short plant in the F2 generation. Thus, the ratio of tall plants to short plants is 3 to 1. This assumes, of course, that Mendel's model of segregation is correct. Did the data from Mendel's experiments fit his model? Yes. The predicted ratio, 3 dominant to 1 recessive, showed up consistently, indicating that Mendel's assumptions about segregation had been correct. For each of his seven crosses, about three-fourths of the plants showed the trait controlled by the dominant allele. About one-fourth showed the trait controlled by the recessive allele. Segregation did indeed occur according to Mendel's model. Probabilities predict averages. Probabilities predict the average outcome of a large number of events. However, probability cannot predict the precise outcome of an individual event. If you flip a coin twice, you are likely to get one head and one tail. However, you might also get two heads or two tails. To be more likely to get the expected 50-50 ratio, you would have to flip the coin many times. The same is true for genetics. The larger the number of offspring, the closer the resulting numbers will get to the expected values. If an F1 generation contains just three or four offspring, it may not match Mendelian predicted ratios. When an F1 generation contains hundreds or thousands of individuals, however, the ratios usually come very close to matching expectations.